Hi, I'm Roger Nielsen. I'm the featured artist here at the uh, Museum of Danish America in Elkhorn, Iowa, and welcome to my show. Uh, it's called Celebrating My Danish Heritage, um, and it's a collection of approximately 40 paintings and two sculptures uh, depicting my pride in my heritage and in my family. Um, this is the featured piece for the uh, for the show. Uh, it's a self-portrait, but it shows that uh, we are strong Viking heritage. We were warriors, we were farmers, we had simple cottages, we had fancy ca uh, castles, and we are the oldest monarchy and the oldest flag in the world. Uh, I also have to celebrate our queen, uh, Queen Marguerite. She's a real Renaissance woman. She speaks several languages. Um, she's a world diplomat, and she's also an artist. Uh, she creates her own clothes, or designs her own clothes, rather, and she uh, also has known to, been known to design the clothes for the Royal Opera in Copenhagen. Uh, this painting here is featuring Holger Dansk. Um, it's a pic picture of a sculpture that is in the basement of the Kronberg Castle where Hamlet was uh, produced. Um, and Holger Dansk is really, well, he's a mythical character. It supposedly is going to, when Denmark is in trouble, he's going to rise up and save the, save the country. But I believe it's really more of a metaphor for, what the, for the Danish people themselves. Because during the Second World War, when Hitler invaded, they, they couldn't uh, have fought Denmark. I mean, Denmark could not have fought Germany. Um, it, but they, so they invited him in and then just harassed the daylights out of them when they were there. Uh, the Holger Dunsk um, uh, resistance group had approximately 350 members and they um, were responsible for over 100 sabotage uh, uh, events and, the, and over 200 assassinations of informants. So they were um, there. They rose up to fight and save Denmark. All right. Now, typically, I paint a lot of wildlife and uh, and. Uh, landscapes and, as well as portraits, but I, I uh, decided to put this one of my wildlife pieces in here because it's swans, and when I can't help but think of Denmark when I see a, uh, see swans. I'm impressed with the fact that the first swan I ever saw alive outside of a zoo was in a moat in a, Denmark, in a Danish castle. And I'm also impressed with the fact that they, how, how they have come back uh, so uh, readily here in this country. That we, they, they were almost extinct here. Uh, now I can, equate, I can equate it with Hans Christian Andersen's Ugly Duckling. Um, it, to me, it's just the epitome of beauty and grace. And it also happens to be the national bird of Denmark. Uh, here's a couple of portraits of my maternal and paternal grandparents. Um, my mother's parents um, were they were really hardy people. I did this painting when I was still in art school in Chicago uh, in the in the early 60s. As a matter of fact, it was 1961. He was at that time uh, battling adenoid cancer, so he was uh, his face is a little distorted, but. Um, he came to this country suffering from tuberculosis, and he was a furniture maker by trade. And he, um, because of the tuberculosis, he couldn't work in a dusty shop, so he became a carpenter and eventually a home builder. Uh, she came to this country, uh, steerage class, um, and worked as a maid for like 17 years to a, with a wealthy doctor in uh, Minneapolis um, for 17 years before she married my grandfather. Um, over here, my paternal grandparents had 15 children and he was what you would call a gentleman farmer, uh, very entrepreneurial and um, he kept moving his family to bigger and bigger and bigger estates uh, as, he, as his fortune grew. Unfortunately, he died penniless because he, uh, because, well, not only the changing of the times, but um, 
He also invested everything he owned in a, uh, in a venture that failed and he died penniless. She came to this country <clears throat> after he died, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, was really disappointed to see that her family in this country during the depression, how they were living in such poverty themselves. Um, my, uh, her sister was living in a little tar paper shack in Withy, Wisconsin, and her children were uh, selling sandwiches on the street corners just trying to survive the depression. Um, if she had lived another 15 years or so, she died here in this country, by the way, and if she, if she had lived another 15 years or so, she would have seen several of them, or most of them, all achieve the uh, so-called American dream. Um, here I have a painting of the my father's birth farm. I call it Picnic on the Farm. Um, this lady right here in the middle is my grandmother. Uh, this is probably my father's oldest sister, and I'm not sure who the others are. Um, it's done from a little sepia tone photograph that I had um, in my mother's uh, albums. And uh, the place is called Port Milligore, which means Port, the township, mill farm. My uh, grandfather used to mill all the grain for the, for the uh, neighboring farms. Uh, this is the schoolhouse that my father went to. It's a thatched roof uh, beam uh, building. Um, my, you know, with 15 children himself, plus the field hands and the servants in the house, there was enough children that my grandfather bought, built his own school. Well, he didn't build it, he bought it, and then and, and, uh, hired his own teacher who lived in the building as well. Um, I visited this building. This was, this was done from a photograph I took of the building when I was there um, in the 90s with my brother Irv. Uh, at that time, it had been restored into a private residence. And um, I've been told, unfortunately, by one of my relatives that just went there recently that it no longer exists. But it was originally built in the 1700s. These are a couple of other views of my uh, father's birth farm. This is the main entrance when you came in. Uh, there was a courtyard and the house was in the background. This is the view of the backyard of the house. Uh, at the time that my father was born, this whole backyard used to be all formal gardens. This is a portrait of my father. Um, I call it, I call this painting, a, he was a builder of houses. He came to this country at age 16 with everything he owned in a little footlocker. He overcame a speech impediment, learned how to speak a new language and learn a trade uh, and to achieve what I, everybody refers to as the American dream. Uh, he eventually became a building contractor and we grew up in a nice comfortable lifestyle. Um, I did this painting from a um, photograph that was taken um, uh, at a family event and he was uh, sitting at the table uh, listening to a conversation. Uh, this is a picture of my mother, Lillian Iverson, originally Iverson, then Nielsen. Um, I did this from a photograph that was taken right after we had, she had been form, informed that she had cancer. Um, I took this photograph the weekend, that weekend that, we, that she found that out, and we, all four of us brothers, got together with mom to celebrate her life. Um, it was kind of a... Well, it was, a, it, was a, it was a really a moving weekend because she, it was the first time that the four of us boys had been together without wives and children. Uh, so we ended up rebonding, and of course, mom had her boys all to herself. This little painting here uh, is, uh, um, depicts my father, my uncle, and my, another uncle, and they were gymnasts, or what they referred to as tumblers. Um, a little story about my, my father and his tumbling. Uh, when my father was working as a carpenter's apprentice for my mother's father, 
and she was a 13 year old boy a girl and he was a 16 year old boy and he sees this 13 year old girl come out to the job with her dad and he wants to show off so he did a handstand on the chimney of the house they were working on well my grandfather he was a little upset he yelled at him to get down and so he did a backflip off of the chimney onto the roof off of the roof down onto the porch roof and then onto the ground and my grandfather was very upset with him but my mother said I was duly impressed it was the beginning of their of a lifelong friendship they were good friends she taught him how to speak English uh, helped him uh, learn how to write English correct as a matter of fact there was a time when he was working uh, in Nebraska for a year or so, and he would send her a letter, and she would correct his English and his spelling and his grammar and send it back to him along with her letter. So that was one of the ways he learned how to speak English and write English. Um, they were good friends for about 10 years before they got married. This is a painting of my three children. Um, back in the day of um, rock and roll and, and the hippie era. I had a little farm up in northern Wisconsin and my three kids would go out and hike the back 40. Uh, this was a staged photograph and the, I did this painting from a photograph that, well my god, it was, wasn't much bigger than a postage stamp. But even though it was staged, uh, it, they were, it shows their sense of adventure and their, and their f a love of nature and their freedom. I'm in incredibly impressed with how th all three of my children have grown up in this world. Um, this is my daughter. My daughter's had a lot of strife in her life, and I think she's come through it all with defiance and, and uh, pride. Uh, she, uh, I think she's as beautiful, if not more beautiful, than she ever was as a child. Um, I've actually entered this painting in a national, a national competition. I'm anxious to see how that goes. And it's painted on um, canvas that has been gilded with metal leaf. This is a painting I did of my brother Irving. Herb was seven years older than me, and he was really an inspiration for me to try and be, perfect myself as an artist. He was very talented, uh, and I was always trying to emulate him and, his, and being able to draw as well as he did. But being seven years older than me uh, made it quite a challenge. But um, when he graduated from high school, he wanted to be, go to art school. He wanted to be an artist. and he, and. Uh, but once he got into, into school, uh, they discovered that he was colorblind. He couldn't decipher certain blues and greens and other colors uh, from one another. So he changed his sculpture to business and economics and with a minor in sculpture. I did this painting and I call it, he was a sculptor. He died here a couple of years ago. But this is one of his pieces that I think is one of my favorite pieces by him. I've depicted it in the painting. But he used to have these, what they call sculpture weekends. He had a lake cottage up in northern Wisconsin. And twice a year, he would get a group of, of uh, sculptors together. Some of them were teachers at colleges and so on. And they were, they would produce sculpture. It would be anywhere from five to 10 of us. And um, I was always asked to participate and I was the only painter. So one time they were giving me a little bit of grief about what is a painter doing here? This is a sculpture weekend. So I went out to my brother's wood pile, grabbed a piece of sculpture, I mean a piece of firewood, and borrowed some chisels and created this Viking totem. And I was inspired by, in his cabin he had this little three-tier totem pole. It was about four feet high. It hung above his door in his cabin. And I thought, I was standing there looking at it and I said, what should I sculpt? And I looked at that and I went, why not a Viking totem? Totem. So this was the start of what was going to be a three-tier Viking totem pole. But this is my one and only sculpture uh, that I've ever produced in my adult career, and it's in my, uh, it's part of this show because it's part of my heritage. In 1909 and to, through 1912, there was an expedition in uh, Greenland. Um, 
Danish expedition in Greenland trying to prove that uh, uh, Perry Island really wasn't an island, it was a peninsula, and that, then, uh, that the United States should take their flag down. Uh, anyway, but he got lost in the Arctic. Uh, they missed their ship coming back and they ate their dogs and they starved, uh, but they managed to survive. And that was Ivor Iverson, and he was my grand, my mother's father's cousin. Uh, since uh, um, when they got back, there was a, uh, they wrote a book on it. It was called Lost in the Arctic. My mother met him back when she was still a teenager. Uh, and got a photograph of him, what he looked like when he was when he had been rescued. And this little painting is done from that photograph that I have that my mother gave me. Um, and since then, now that uh, the book came out, Lost in the Arctic was uh, really written based on his diary or his journal. Um, and then in 1955, the partner Mickelson. Um, he wrote a book called Two Against the Ice. And just recently, um, Netflix put, uh, produced a movie called Against the Ice. And now that's, the book has been republished uh, under that name as well. Um, I've, read all, I've read both books and I've seen the movie and I think it's an incredibly uh, intriguing story. And there again, something that has made me more proud of my family heritage. Now being that my grandfather had a relative that had been in Greenland, he had a lot of books on Greenland. And as a young student uh, right out of art school, I was looking at his books and I did some paintings from them. So here's an uh, Inuit mother and child that I painted in 1963 um, from pictures in that book. And this one here, this is a, a Greenlandic Eskimo smoking a Danish pipe. And I was particularly intrigued with that because my father had a whole collection of these smoking paraphernalia. Uh, you know, I think he had about 12 or 15 of them hanging on a wall in his office. And uh, so I was particularly intrigued with the Native American or Native Greenlander uh, smoking a Danish pipe. There you have a little nutshell of uh, why I am so proud of my heritage and um, why I've spent uh, the last uh, year and a half uh, collecting uh, paintings that I've done in the past or making new payments, paintings of uh, my Danish heritage and, and why I'm so proud of Denmark and my, and my family. Uh, I hope though, uh, that you get a chance to stop down here in Elkhorn. Uh, it's a beautiful area and it's a nice little museum here in, uh, in Elkhorn, uh, set in a nice prairie grass setting. I hope you come down, check out the museum, and come and see my art.